and it is an absolute game changer in the rear suspension department, which I will get to shortly, so stick around for that. Welcome everybody back to the video. Today, I'm in the Aussie bush. I found an awesome vantage point to do a video, but it's only five <laughs> degrees. I'm fully rugged up, I'm so, so cold, but that's not gonna stop me from riding and making a video. In today's video though, for all the DRZ 400E fans out there like myself, I get asked a lot about this topic. If you wanna make this bike a true adventure bike, an all-round bike, if there was only one modification to be done, what would that be? In my opinion, that has to be suspension to make this bike a true, true, worthy adventure bike. And recently, which is what prompted me to make this video, a new product that came across, it's not brand placement, it's not a sponsorship, I purely came across it by accident, and it is an absolute game changer in the rear suspension department, which I will get to shortly, so stick around for that. So let's get into it. If you buy a Suzuki DRZ 400D from a factory, yes, the suspension is super, super soft. It's no secret, right? But I'm going to go on record and say if you want to ride unloaded and you just want to hoon around bush like this on fire trails and single trails, I have ridden with plenty of guys that outdo me any day of the week, never done anything to the suspension, and they get by just fine. And they get to save the money for petrol, pies, I don't know, beers for the weekend, whatever it may be. However, and it's a big however, if you want to make this bike a true adventure bike, be able to tackle any terrain in Australia fully loaded up, you've got to, got to have your suspension done in my opinion, not only for comfort, not only for control, but also for safety, because otherwise it is too soft to carry the extra load. However, do yourself a big, big favor before committing to an upgrade on your suspension, speak to the store owner, speak to the suspension guru, speak to your mates, whatever it may be, and make sure you explain yourself properly. Early in the piece, I learned the hard way. I had no idea about this adventure riding business. I went into a store, said, hey mate, I'm 105 kilos, and I want to effectively travel all over Australia, and I want to strap down my house and a petrol station to my bike and tackle any terrain I can come across, even though I've never done that before. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that suspension guy just looked at me and go, this guy's got absolutely no idea what he's doing. And six years later, what has brought me to make this video, my suspension has been totally neglected, so I was forced to get it serviced just to discover that my rear spring was completely the wrong stiffness, so far from what I needed, um, and I never ever questioned it, right? So learn from me, explain yourself properly, and make sure you get the right springs to start with. So in saying that, let's talk about my personal stats, my mighty, mighty Sally, and what her current setup is. So you might be able to do your own comparisons from my bike to your own bike if you want to upgrade your suspension and or improve your current setup. So I'm 193 centimetres around the six foot four mark. Um, any given day, I'm normally 98 kilos. Um, I always sell around, I'm pretty much under 100 kilos. Uh, with riding gear, I approximate that at around 102 to 103 kilos, depending on the weather. So most day rides, I rarely ride unloaded now. Um, pretty much the setup you see here is how I'll ride all the time. So I'm carrying eight kilos of luggage on the back safari tank and my little tank bag. If I'm doing an overnighter, nothing changes other than my bags get bigger and I carry around the 16 kilo mark. And if I'm gonna be doing a week long trip or more, normally this blows out to 20 to 25 kilos on the rear. So as you can see, there's a lot of fluctuations between the particular rides that I'm doing. And finally, um, I believe this is a big factor too. I don't shy away from any of the hard terrain if I'm fully loaded up. So I think that in itself is a big contributing factor to what sort of spring setup you want whilst carrying your luggage. So as a result of those stats, Sally's new setup, I've got a rear 6.8 spring up from a 6.4. I never knew that I had a 6.4 and I never knew that it was um, really not doing the job. I just had the preload cranked up and just relied on that. My front are a 0.54 and the suspension has been revalved accordingly, but um, according to my latest service, that was done pretty good. However, there was a broken O-ring in the bottom of my suspension and it turns out I've probably had <laughs> No, it's embarrassing to say, no dampening or next to no dampening this whole time and I've never known about it because from what I've learned, I could be wrong, but the guy told me O-rings pretty much never break into suspension, 
they break when being inserted and his suspension on the front, on the right anyway, was done six years ago. So I've very well been riding around with um, a broken seal in there for six straight years and I've never known about it. Anyway, that's um, something for me to learn and um, deal with. All right, let's get to the business side of this video. This is not brand placement, this is not a sponsorship. This is a product that I came across completely by accident. Cannot believe I never knew it existed. And in my opinion, if I didn't know it existed, there's probably hundreds of other guys or girls out there that don't know about its existence either. But I'm happy to go on record and put it in this video and I'm gonna show you it in a second. But that is a X-Trig Preload Adjuster. A fancy, fancy word for a little, little part. It looks like this. I'm not gonna be able to show you on the bike because obviously it's in the bike, but this is what it looks like on a photo. I've recently had it installed. It is a little bit expensive. It's around that $250 mark onwards, and that's not having it fitted. I do believe you have to have the shock pulled apart on the DRZ400D to fit it to the bike. But if you're like me and you love playing around with your race sag, your static sag, no matter what lugs you've got on, you want to make sure your preload's done correctly, which for me is every bloody ride. You come back, you realise the job's going to suck, take your plastic off, get a long nail punch, you start whacking your lock rings on your suspension, you hit your fingers, you hit your frame, you hate life, but that's what you do. Now, I know that sounds terrible. Actually, I always wondered how that even passed the design phase of the Suzuki DRZ 400 back in the day. But now, something I prepared earlier, I can just grab an eight mil socket. This is a, a fixed handle one, you get a T handle. And I'm gonna show you in a second that I can get into this X-Trig preload adjuster right here, right now, luggage, no luggage, doesn't matter. And I can just start turning away and adjusting my preload so, so easy. I've done a strategically placed speed hole here, which is um, pretty handy because it's covered by my tank bag strap anyway. And I can access that right now, which I'm going to show you with the um, camera a bit further away, and I can adjust my preload so, so easy. I'll show you. So I'm about to adjust the um, preload here. I'm not going to do too much because I don't want to throw my setting out. But a bit of a um, shout out to Josh JB. Most people that watch my videos will know about his videos. He got his suspension done very, very, uh, at a very similar time to when I did. And I told him about this product hidden in here, but he didn't go and get one. Um, I'm not sure if he had his thing already sort of booked in, but he should have got one because he's going to hate me from now on. So I can get this, put it in my speed hole, just locate the 8mm nut, which there it is. And I kid you not, it looks this fancy. I feel very posh and um, very important doing this. And I can now fully load it up. I can just stiffen. Yep, no worries. I can loosen. No worries. I can check my race sag. I can check my static sag. A few more turns maybe. It is that easy now. And I can just go like this, put that away, and it's adjusted. How did I not know about this product ever before? As I said, it is an absolute game changer. Do yourself a favor. Spend the money if you're serious about adventure riding and playing around with your preload. Get the right rear spring. Get this x trig fitted to your bike. And never, never look back and hate life when adjusting your suspension. All right, guys, that's enough ranting about my current setup. Um, I'm going to enjoy this awesome, awesome lookout for a little bit longer. But then, I kid you not, I've only ridden 10 kilometers on a flat fire trail to get here. Um, I have recently had all this suspension done and other than in my garage playing around with all the sag settings, I haven't truly experienced the, um, the noticeable differences on the hard terrain from my new setup to my old flogged out, worn out setup. So I'm going to throw a leg over, go for a ride, hit some terrain and um, I'll talk you through my first impressions and I hope, I hope I notice them and I'm super happy with the upgrades. Let's go. I'm just um, descending a pretty standard fire trail but I'll tell you what, um, there are rocks and bumps here straight away i can notice really really notice the front wheel tracking so much better my complaint used to be my front wheel felt like it never was in contact with the ground and it was always so jarring um to be honest i'm not even hesitant about hitting things how good is this oh <laughs> is this what it feels like to ride a suspension that works how have I not ever picked up on my suspension being so bad? Another thing I'm noticing as well, oh, what have we got here? I've never been on these tracks before. 
cool, this looks pretty full on, might be a good test if it's doable. Hang on, before I go talking about something. Yep, let's just drop into this. Well, here we go, we're going down a pretty significant hill. Um, and I'm not wanting to sit down at the moment, which is a good sign. And I'm letting the bike get away from me in terms of speed. Just popped down in here. Beautiful. I tell you what I think it is, the difference now, as I ride this setup more and more, it's um, far more confidence inspiring. Oh, what's this? Shoot. Whew. It's far more confidence inspiring just to hit the throttle. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is sensational. <laughs> yeah, I'm wanting to pop off here. Yep, boom. Unbelievable difference. I'm so, so happy. All right, let's tackle this hill. This is pretty full on first gear. I'm just going to trust the suspension. is sensational once I get the confidence to go faster pop up here it's just absorbed oh I'm so happy money well spent another awesome thing about my suspension now is I'm um, at the faster stuff like 80 km an hour 100 km an hour you come along these fire trails and you come across little rocks and potholes and normally yeah I mean you should avoid them but I find that um, if I fall in one I'm not getting as nervous just pop the front wheel up and the rear suspension the rear spring in particular is fully absorbing it and not bottoming out and or bucking me out of the um, the hole so it's hard to describe I guess I'm not a suspension expert but it's a noticeable noticeable difference which way do I want to go here, left or right? Um, go right. But yeah, it's a noticeable. Here's a puddle. Noticeable difference is one. That's a big one. And it's just absorbing it. It's as simple as that. Doing what it should do whilst carrying. Here's one. Yep, beautiful. Now, I don't recommend hitting every pothole like that, but to test your bike, uh, yeah, much, much different. Very happy. Well, everybody, as you've seen, I'm in love with my new suspension. Um, do yourself a favor. Keep on top of your servicing. Don't go six years without a service like I did. Oh, what am I getting myself into? Um, but please leave in the comments if anybody is buying a X-Trig preload adjuster. I'd be keen to know if this video has been of use and or assisted someone in deciding to buy such a product because I believe it's fantastic. Go on record, as I said, I'm not sponsored by them. I just think it's a great product and why not promote it? But um, yeah, let me know guys. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you on the next ride. Oh man, this is hairy. Whew. Come on, Lance, it's so wet. I didn't intend on finishing on that track, but like I said, everybody, I'll catch us all next time.